Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, you guys already know by the title, I got how to make a soul, uh, how to make souls RNG game. This is part two, of the tutorial series and stuff like that. Um, I'm gonna just say thank you guys for the love and support y'all showed on part one. If you check the date and time in the bottom right, you'll see that like this is this is literally a day after I recorded part one, so I have no idea how part one did. I'm assuming it did good, and I hope it did good. If it did, thank you for all the love and support y'all showed. I really appreciate it. Uh, just continue showing the series some love, and I will keep the series going. If there's anything you want to see or any issues you find, just leave them in the comments, ping me in Discord, whatever. That's the finale. We'll address that or possibly add whatever your suggestion is, right? So if you haven't watched part one, go watch part one. As you can see, there's already a whole bunch of things set up. But anyway, if you watch part one, let's go ahead and get straight into it. Okay, first things first we need to um, add a storage slash inventory system, right? So that's, you know, that's what part two, part two, uh, just, just gonna put that out there. Part two includes data saving and a inventory system. So players can equip their own auras, like the auras they own, right? And then also like, yeah, I just wanna clarify, not like auras outside of the game, like owned auras, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, let's go ahead and get straight into it. Okay, so first things first, right? Let's, Let's take care of the UI. Yeah, let's add the storage UI, then we'll get to scripting. First things first, let's make an inventory button. Y'all know when souls are in RNG, the inventory button is, you know, like up here, like in the middle left. So um let's go ahead and let's duplicate the roll button. So I'm gonna duplicate the roll button control D. I'm gonna drag it over here to the corner. Um I'm gonna give it a little border and I'm gonna make it white, right? For these side buttons, depending I don't know how many I'm gonna make, but yeah. Then I'm going to change the size to 50 because, you know, I need oh, sorry, 50, not 500, right? And then I'm going to change the text to S, S for storage, right? Or if you, you know, want, I don't know, menu, uh, inventory, it's up to you really, honestly. But yeah, so I'm just going with S, right? And then, of course, we're going to need to rename the button. So rename, rename it to storage button, right? So, oh, sorry, not storage button storage button right then we're gonna go ahead and insert a frame to the roller shoe so let's insert a frame i'm gonna drag it to the middle um it's gonna be a pretty big frame so like 500 by like 300 i think or actually no it might have been yeah no i think i made it bigger than that it might have been like seven wait that might, okay never mind that i might be tripping with that not gonna lie. maybe it was just like five it might have been just like 500 by 400 honestly no or no, because it was kind of wider than that, like 600. Okay, I'm going to go with 600 by 300. I'm just, yeah, we're just going to go with that for now, right? It's not like I need a whole bunch of space anyway. So this is going to be our storage frame, right? So storage frame, and it's going to be parented to the role of GUI. Then for this, you know, we're, you guys see the pattern we're going with. We're going with uh, background transparencies. You know, we want background transparency to be half. And then, we, you know, we want black backgrounds, right? So boom. Wait, hold on, y'all give me one second, actually. I just thought about something. I just, I just thought about something. I literally just remembered. I want to watch. Oh, I just remembered. I just want to rewatch this anime. I ain't even gonna lie. I just remembered that. I just had to write that down real quick. Anyway, put that in my phone. Anyway. Okay, so back to what I was saying, right? So we have our storage frame, right? Let's drag it, you know, above the roll button and stuff. So it's not, you know, in the way, right? And then let's go ahead and we're going to insert a text button into the storage frame right or we or should I, not a text button i'm sorry not a text button a text label right into the storage frame and then we want it to be like at the top i, I want it to be above but then the roll button is to yeah the roll button actually oh never mind i see it now so okay yeah we can do it like this so we can have it like this because you guys see look like when i disable the output you see how like it's it's actually lower so it's just gonna look like it's just gonna look like it's overlapping but it's really not so anyway, um, I'm going to put this, so I'm going to move the storage frame, move the storage frame down there and then move the button at the top, to the top, right? So I'm going to rename the text label to simply storage header, right? Y'all already know what we're going to do, you know, black, tracks, black, black background colors, open five transparency, rich text, bold text, set the text to storage. Scale the text, text color will be white, right? Boom, right? And then I also wanted a uh, border side, a border outline, but it's again, that's up to you guys, it's optional. You wanna include that. So let me get that, right? Let me drag it up so I can actually see the top. Okay, like, yeah, there we go. 
right then we're going to insert another frame into this frame and this is going to be our actual inventory frame so you're going to insert a frame into the storage frame this is going to be your inventory frame this is going to be the frame that you know keeps that you know has all of the players owned auras inside of them so players can access them so as for this we're going to you know we want it to be like maybe like, i don't know 400 maybe oh wait get, wait no 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 what i meant to do like 400 by like i don't know 200 maybe um yes yeah, I, think, I think something like that and then we want it to be like here for this because this is how it is in the game so and then i'm gonna make it you know you already know same deal boom right that's our inventory frame then i'm gonna want to insert a ui grid layout because it's gonna automatically sort everything you know position and size wise. it's gonna sort them by position and then also size so you guys can change these numbers you know to whatever your liking is but i went with 10 10 left uh, 0 so i changed x to 10 and left y uh, is 5 now for the cell size um so the cell size the icons are going to be bigger than like the actual game but i don't really think that matters to anybody so i'm just going to have the 80 by 50 right so boom right and then just like that guys we are done that is it for the ui i'm going to move the storage button over just a little so like we can actually you know see the outline there we go so then we need to of course disable the storage frame right because we want it to be enabled when a player presses the storage button which is why we are going to head on over to the, lo the core local script let me just double check okay i'm good so right, so we're gonna head over to the local script and we're gonna create another function similar to this one so i'm gonna go in between the save position variable and the first function we have on the local script and i'm gonna say roll gui dot storage button that mouse button one click connect function close parentheses enter right then i'm going to say i'm gonna set up an if statement right i'm gonna say if roll gui dot storage frame dot visible is equal to true right if it's equal to true which means it's visible all we have to do is just simply just say roll roll gui dot storage frame dot visible is equal to false because that just means the player wants to disable it then let's throw in an else well, we're making it else if we're just going to copy and paste this so control c control v boom so else if visible is equal to false which means we want to enable it before we do that though we need to um we need to add all the ores that the player has owned so that they can you know equip whatever or it is they want right so i'm gonna say or I mean, so for v in pairs loop so for i comma v in pairs i'm going to say player dot well, remember our owned auras folder so owned auras get children parentheses enter all right then i'm going to say if v dot value is equal to true and not roll gui dot storage frame dot inventory and okay frame dot inventory frame find first child v dot name dot 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 quotation marks button because that's going to be the name of it enter this is just to make sure we don't have any duplicate uh buttons or buttons right so now i'm going to create the or button so i'm going to say local aura button is equal to instance that new quotation marks is going to be a text button of course you're going to parent this to the inventory frame boom right then I'm going to say or button dot name is equal to v dot name dot, dot, dot quotation marks button just like I mentioned up there on line 16. Then I'm going to say or button dot background color. We're going to do, we're going to do a whole bunch of customization is equal to color three dot new zero comma zero comma zero just black. Then or button dot background transparency is of course going to be equal to zero point five or button dot text is going to be equal to i actually just learned this i didn't even know you could do this guys i'm not gonna lie but it's like i knew you could do this like coding generally but i didn't know you could do this with roblox like lua so, so um so we're gonna make bold text without needing to actually have two lines so we're not gonna like we don't have to have a text line and then a um line to set the text set the text button text equal to bold if that makes sense all i gotta do is just do uh left arrow or less than symbol whatever you want to call it b you know for bold greater than arrow right then we're going to say dot 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 then you're going to put your text so of course we're going to say v.name so whatever the name of the or is right then dot 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 to close it out quotation marks less than uh backslash b greater than right boom that's how we do and the text will be bold now then i'm going to say or button dot text color three is equal to color three dot new of course we want white so one comma one comma one boom right then or button dot rich text is equal to true and or button dot scaled 
okay that text scale sorry not scale text is equal to true all right and then we're going to create a function we're going to say or button that mouse button one, okay that mouse button one click connect function close parentheses enter this is for when a player is trying to equip an aura right we're going to create a uh, variable for the or so we know like you know what the or is called so because we're going to need to split the string up so or is equal to string dot split right because remember the name of the button is the name of the or plus the word button so we're going to have to split that up so we're going to say or button dot name right then i'm going i just realized can i just use the value i just thought about that can i, can I really just use the value the specific value Wait, I just actually thought about that. Hold on. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna see if this works. I'm gonna see if this works. Okay. Never mind. Here's what we're gonna we're gonna say we're gonna skip to this. We're gonna say core event fire server in quotation marks. Quip or remember this is the we made this event uh, in part one. We're just simply calling on it again. Then comma and you're gonna say v dot value because that should be I'm sorry v dot value v dot name that should be the name of the or. Okay. So if this works correctly, then we're gonna keep it like this. If there's any if there's any issues with this, then I'm going to come back and change it to what I originally had. Because I originally had it where we split the string, but it's fine. Because if this is an easier way, then even better. Then we're going to come down here, so skip three ends. And then you're going to say, um, roll a GUI dot storage frame that visible is equal to true, right? And then we are going to head on over to the uh, core server script, right? And then I'm going to set up the data loading and then data saving. And then that's actually it. I, I really thought I had to do, I was going to have to do something, add something onto the uh, on server events function, but no, just data loading, data saving. So adding onto this function and one more function. So we're going to go here, all right? We're going to get our player's key. I'm going to say local key is equal to player.user ID. You guys should have enabled data stores, you know, when we created the role data store. Um, I don't really think about that. That should really be called core data store. Um, do I feel like changing it? I mean, I guess I haven't called it yet. So yeah. Okay. Let's change this actually. So I want to change this variable from role data store because it's because that the data store isn't used just for roles now. Like it, it, you know, like it's what we needed it for. But now we also need own or. So let's just let's just call it or data store. Honestly, like that's just better. Or a data store. Or you could go with core data store. So or a data store. I prefer that since the game is just generally about ors, right? So I'm going to, after I get the key, uh, I recommend using the player's user ID like I have, right? Then we're going to get the player's data. We're going to say local data is equal to or a data store, get async, throw the key in there, right? And then I'm going to set up the uh, protect the call to ensure this works. So I'm going to say local success, comma, error message is equal to peak out function close parentheses enter then i'm going to say if data so if the player has any data we're going to load it we're going to say roles dot value is equal to data regular bracket one then you're going to say current or dot value is equal to data two then we're going to say classic dot value whatever the name of your first or is you like you guys see we're just going down the list that's all we're doing we're just going down the list data three and then um rare dot value is equal to data of four and then boom that's simple and then if, now if you have more auras and stuff like a long, longer list just keep going down the list just go top to bottom that's simple right and then all we're going to do is we're going to close it out we're going to put a space in between we're going to say while not success enter you're going to copy and paste this control c control v so a task that way so i'm going to do test that way three seconds boom we're done with the data loading portion now for data saving okay so I'm going to go down here, right? Put a space in between. I'm going to create a function for when players are leaving. So game dot players dot player removing connect function in parentheses put plr short for player enter. And then you're going to create variables first. You're going to say, uh, or sorry, we're going to set the function first. I'm going to say local success comma error message is equal to protect to call function enter. And then you're going to set the variables. You're going to say local key is of course equal to you know players user ID. Then I'm going to set the data table to save our data. So data tables, you can do special brackets. And then I'm going to say table dot insert data table comma player dot leader stats dot roles dot value because you know we need to get our roles how many roles we have. Then table dot insert data table comma I'm going to say player dot current aura dot value 
um i'll probably make it so that like a player current or like it'll will automatically load it when a player rejoins the game probably do that like part three right and then i'm gonna use a four i loop to get the rest this will save you a whole bunch of time so say if you have like 10 different ores you don't actually have to type them individually for saving you have to do that for loading but so, sorry but i saved y'all half the time so all we have to do is use a four i loop we're gonna say four iv in pairs and then you're gonna say player dot owned auras right and then you say get children Enter, then you're going to say table dot insert data table comma v dot value so it's simply going to go down the list right it's going to go it's going to go down in order of like everything that's inside of the owned orders folder so it's going to go down classic rare right it's just going to go down in, a, in order right so after we've done the table of insert we're going to go on, on the outside of the loop and then we're going to say roll we're going to say uh sorry not roll or data store set a sync throw the key in there then the data table and boom right set a sync then we're going to go down we're gonna go down like right um here i'm gonna say while wow, not success enter copy already another drill copy and paste control c control v then i'm gonna throw a test i'll wait three seconds right and then i'm going to um what's it called oh actually sorry no man that's actually it I ain't glad I got distracted. I was like, but anyway, so let's go ahead and test to make sure this works. Like I said, I did change this from what I originally had in mind at first. But yeah, as always, if you guys want access to any one of my scripts or models, you guys can become either a channel member or a Discord subscriber. Link to either one of those options can be found in the description. Highly recommend you guys do that. Okay, so as you as you guys can see, I have nothing saved. Own auras, there's nothing. So if I roll, let's go ahead and roll. I probably need to add sound for this too. So my roll is increased by one. I now own classic. Nice. If I equip the classic aura and then I open up the storage frame, boom. I now have classic as a choice, right? So I can, um, I'm able to equip classic, but obviously I would need to have another aura to actually be able to test that. So, okay, perfect. I got rare. So I can equip rare. It's working, right? Boom. Everything is working great. You guys see I have both. And now I can switch between both of them. Classic, rare. Classic, rare. That simple. Boom, right? Now let's test to make sure data saving works. We know the storage from ranks. Okay. So we're simply just going to go to the server side, delete our player from uh, that. Give it a few seconds to ensure that the server saves. And then boom, stop, then play, and then let's see what happens. We should have two rolls, and boom, there you go. Everything saved. Two rolls, storage frame. I can put back. I can put on the ores I had. There we go. So yeah, everything works. Like I said in the beginning of the video, if you guys want me to continue this series, just simply leave a like, subscribe. Let me know you're enjoying the series, and I will for sure keep it up. This stuff as I intro. I like this game. Not gonna lie. Or I like the content for it because it's honestly very simple. It's very easy stuff to make. But yeah. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you all for watching.